Hello, everybody. Welcome back. Thank you for clicking on this video. You're one step closer to getting that quick back pain relief that you're looking for. And if you're looking to help somebody who's in some has some back pain, then you're in for in for a nice treat because there's going to be some cool exercises for you to do that can help that person have some immediate back pain relief. So one thing in that uh, you're probably going to recognize in these stretches is you're going to recognize at least one of them. But there's an important detail that you've probably been missing or haven't been doing that is going to completely change the outcomes for the pain relief that you're wanting. So pay attention to that. Also, the next point is that stretching is a temporary pain relief. It's something that you want to take advantage of after you have pain relief. So when you do the stretch, you have some pain relief and science is telling us that you have about 30 minutes to do whatever activity so that you can train a better pattern, better movement pattern so that you can keep the back pain away. So what I like to do is utilize these three stretches, something on the sidelines that I can do really quick for my athletes to either get them back in the game, but most importantly, when I'm in the clinic, just to do something that can help calm down that back pain. Once the back pain's calmed down, I'm excited. They're obviously excited, but I'm excited as a clinician because now I can begin to train movement patterns that don't have pain. And the only way to train a movement pattern to make it permanent is if it doesn't have, if a person doesn't have pain. So from that point on, that kind of gets my treatment plan started. So I want to share these top three exercises, these top three stretches that I do for immediate back pain relief. Hope you enjoy. Oh, and one other thing is a bonus stretch that I included in there at the end. Uh, it's really good, especially for athletes if they're interested. So stay until the end to check it out. Okay, so the first one up is probably something you might recognize. We're going to do two knees to chest. First, you want to make sure that you're lying flat on the table. You have your bottom on the table, chin tucked, your neck, all the spines aligned. If you pull your knees too far up, your butt's going to be up in the air. That's not getting the back stretch that we want. So you want to pull your knees as close as you can to your chest while keeping your, your bottom on the table, right? We don't want to see any of your low back or any of your glutes or bottom up off the table, okay? There should be no gap. Next, we're going to be moving to single leg. Same thing. You don't want any gap or space between there. If you're a clinician, you want to maybe get in a step sole on the side of the table or get up on top of the table, and you actually want to push the knee directly down. So when you're applying this force, even myself as I'm doing it, I'm not pulling up towards my chest, I'm pulling down towards the table. Okay, so number two, this one personally is my favorite. Now this is probably one that clinicians might have seen more often than lay people, so pay attention if you've never seen this before. So this is a setup. You wanna get a foam roll, you can get some pads or pillows or some sort of cushion to have your leg elevated to lay on top of. And then you're gonna to wanna to pull that back leg straight. Now, as I just was trying to signal there is that you wanna move your shoulder blade or your chest to the ground. You don't wanna reach with your arm, right? So you're not just trying to touch your arm to the ground. You're actually moving your chest, you're rotating through your body, through your midsection to get that scapula back on the ground or your shoulder blade. Another thing to, to note is that when your leg is on the stack of books, pillows, or foam roll, you want to push down. So you want to have a force pushing down. So that means the inside muscles of your thigh on my right leg in the video, the top leg, is going to be pushing down into the foam roll while I'm rotating with my eyes, my neck, my head, and trying to get my shoulder blade to the ground as I rotate. And then obviously you want to switch sides. So I usually hold this for gosh, anywhere between 15 and 30 seconds, it's probably okay. Another important thing to note here is that the down leg, the one where I'm pulling my ankle and bending my back leg, the one on the mat, that thigh should be in line with the spine, right? You see how my top spine is, I'm exaggerating, it was rotated out to the side. You wanna make sure that you stay lined up. So if I took a picture from the top view, my spine would make a straight line with my leg. Okay, this next exercise, same thing, may also be familiar to clinicians and not so much to lay people, but you wanna start off in this sort of shin box position, what we call. So you're gonna reach with your hands and pull yourself across just like that. And then you can also straighten out your leg like I just did. 
it's important to not lean. Use those hands as posts to keep your spine as tall and straight as possible. You wanna make sure those toes and that ankle are bent towards you. That's gonna give you a nice, good stretch in the back of the leg. By the way, the back of the leg muscles and tissues back there affect the posture of your pelvis, of your hip, which is definitely gonna affect if you're having low back pain or not. This is a really good time to note that you want to make sure you're breathing through your midsection. You want to make sure you're using your diaphragm to breathe in and out of your nose. And usually what I tell people is not hold it for 15 or 30 seconds. Usually I say hold it for three to five breaths. So if you're doing three to five breaths, breathing in for your three or four seconds and breathing out for six seconds, then you're doing a really good job. Make sure that on the exhale throughout your breathing, you try to get a little bit further in your stretch each time. Okay, bonus stretch. Here we go, so this is a good one. This is a little advanced and complex, but it's still something that's really good, especially for athletes. So any rotational athletes like soccer, baseball, where the upper and the chest uh, move in opposite directions as the lower extremity, this is a good one. Sort of looks kind of complex, but I break it down for you right there in the video pretty good. So you set up in the same position as the third stretch that I showed you. Put the palm face up, put your hand on top, and then rotate. Make sure your eyes and your neck are also rotated in that same direction that the chest is going. Again, same thing here. You can hold this for three to five breaths. Make sure you're breathing in and out of the nose. The reason why we breathe in and out of the nose, there's so many great reasons, but there's we have a nose hairs that help us provide nitrous oxide and really open up our nutrients to our bloodstream, as well as put us in more of what we call a parasympathetic state of mind or a relax and digest state of being, which helps our tissues to get an optimal stretch. Okay, thanks again for watching this video. I hope you found at least one of these or all of these were helpful to help relieve some of your back pain. But also, like I said in the very beginning, don't forget, stretching is not the end all be all. You're gonna wanna make sure that you check out some of my other videos so that after stretching and after you have that pain relief, you can then start to train movement patterns so that you can move better through your hips, you can move better through your upper back so that we can start to prevent this back pain from ever coming back again. So stay tuned, keep checking out the channel, hit subscribe, hit like, like on this video if you liked it. If you want to see some other videos of some other injuries or things that you've been having or any pains or aches, please leave a comment and I'll make some more videos about it. Thank you.